Chapter 5 Sing the Magician How can you be the magician who created the curse? Link asked in honest confusion. Princess Zelda was put to sleep hundreds of years ago. Curses are funny that way, I suppose, Sing explained as she gave him back his sword. I'm sure you've heard a bunch of stories about the poor victims of being cursed, but in real life an actual curse demands just as much from the caster as from the afflicted. So I say to you again, do you accept the chance to break the curse or does my old friend Zelda get to sleep for a few hundred more years? Do it, Link. The Triforce of Power urged from atop the altar where it had been set. You defeated Ganondorf, so go ahead and show this witch the power that the others did not possess. Tread carefully, Link, the Triforce of Wisdom added. You are a great warrior, but so were the others, so do not underestimate the dangers of the quest. Everyone seemed to have accepted the situation for what it was, as did they all have their own opinions about what the Lord Sheriff should do about it. Well, all except King Facade, who was oddly silent for some reason. The Queen, on the other hand, was very outspoken about what was happening, going on about how this was the chance for her ancestor to awaken, and for Hyrule to know a new era of peace under the United Triforces. Zelda's faith in his abilities was understandable since he had defeated Ganondorf, but the battle had honestly been a team effort, and this new quest would have been undertaken alone. If it makes you feel any better... The dark-haired woman continued, You should know that I am not allowed to interfere with the challenges in any way, nor may I physically hinder you from attempting them. Honestly, that was a relief since Sing wielded the same kind of magic that Aghanim and Ganondorf used, if not more. She was telling the truth, there was no challenge in this land that could have been more difficult than what he had faced while trying to rescue Zelda five years ago especially since Ganondorf had been supported by the Triforce of Power, an artifact that he currently held. So Link accepted the magician's terms, finding himself hesitate once again after being surprised by Sing's smile. Her beautiful, genuine smile. Then there is no time to lose, she said, turning away and motioning for him to follow. I will guide you to the first challenge, and there we shall see what you are made of. Good luck, Link. Queen Zelda said, putting a hand on his shoulder. If anyone can put an end to this curse, it's you. Facade also wished him luck, as did the now fairy Impa, who also added a warning about not trusting Sing. The Lord Sheriff assured them that he would not fall, and as confident as he appeared, Link now wished more than anything that his old friend Aghanim could have joined him. To say that he wasn't nervous about going off alone with the magician would have been a lie, Sing was beautiful and powerful, and he had no way of knowing whether or not she had been telling him the truth about, well, any of it. So, why are you going along? Link asked after stopping to grab his shield and trusty boomerang. Wouldn't it be easier for you to simply tell me where to go and then wait? Without me, you'd never even find the challenge sites, she explained as they headed towards the doors. And besides, if you die and you're alone out there, who will be around to bring the news back? Although what she was saying made sense, it did not sit well with him, nor did her plural emphasis on the words challenge sights, as in more than one. Now exiting the castle and walking toward the stables where the Lord Sheriff's horse was kept, he asked the magician just how many challenge sights there were, but she would not say. Claiming that she was not allowed because of the curse's rules, Sing explained that part of the challenge was to keep going without knowing if there were five or fifty obstacles to overcome. So, what happens if you break the rules? He asked, putting the bridle and saddle on his horse. You keep going on about how everything has to happen a certain way, but what would happen if you just, oh, I don't know, killed me? That would absolutely not happen, the magician replied, a sudden seriousness in her voice. If I were to do something like that, or if you were to do the opposite, then the curse would last forever. The Triforce of Courage would remain lost behind the barrier, and your precious Zelda would remain asleep for all time. It sounded pretty serious and was as good of an explanation as any, but from the way she talked, it was almost as if the dark-haired woman wanted him to break the curse. But that made absolutely no sense if she was the one who had created it in the first place. Soon the horse was saddled, and now it was getting late enough in the morning for the sky to start turning blue as the Lord Sheriff climbed onto the saddle. 
He was surprised, however, when he felt Sing climb on as well, sitting behind him while locking her arms around his waist. Head west, she ordered, pointing toward the bridge. Don't worry, you don't have to go far. The North Palace sat at the center of a small island in the middle of the lake, meaning that unless someone wanted to either swim or they were able to fly, the bridge was the only way in or out. The guards lifted the heavy latch upon seeing his approach, and there was a loud creak as they pushed the wooden doors open, allowing them to finally leave the palace and start across the bridge. Link was starting to wonder when she was going to tell him where they were going, but upon reaching the mainland, the magician let go of his waist with one arm, so that something could slide down into her hand from up her sleeve. Recognizing the object immediately, the Lord Sheriff couldn't help but gasp when he realized that it was not a weapon, but a recorder. The same kind of musical instrument that Ganondorf had used to travel great distances around the southern outskirts. He started to protest, bringing the horse to a stop in order to take it from her, but it was too late. With one hand, Singh brought the recorder to her lips and played a series of notes. Having only traveled with such a device a single time before, Link remembered every detail of the experience, beginning with the wind picking up around them, swirling like a miniature tornado as the whole world vanished around them. The wind was so strong that he had to shut his eyes and no other sound beyond the moving air could be heard, but he was dimly aware of Singh holding on to him while they spun around and around. But then it all stopped. The wind, the noise, everything faded away as quickly as it had appeared, and the dizziness along with the sudden brightness of the landscape left him so disoriented that he fell from the horse. Expecting to fall into either grass or the hardened road, the Lord Sheriff was surprised when it was sand. Hot, shifting sand that broke his fall. Some of it got into his mouth, causing him to cough and spit it out as he got up on his hands and knees, and when he was finally able to open his eyes, there was a bright, arid landscape before him. The grasslands and lakes were gone, replaced by a place that looked like a small Tantari desert, where he had pursued Daira, but this was bigger. A lot bigger. Where are we? Link asked, getting to his feet. Sing, what is this place? What, the Lord Sheriff doesn't know his own kingdom? The dark-haired woman laughed from still atop the horse. This is the great Parappa Desert. When I was a little girl, it was lush and green here, but no longer. Shall we? After brushing the sand off himself, he climbed onto the horse, and together the two of them rode deeper into the desert. Sing reminisced about how there had once been trees and rivers flowing through Parappa, as well as a great palace that had been abandoned as soon as the water dried up. Of course, the Lord Sheriff had never been to Parappa before, and was honestly not even sure where it was on the map. With no directions other than to keep heading northwest, it wasn't hard for him to figure out that she was taking him to the old palace, but the magician would say nothing about what the challenge was to be. Back during the fight against Ganondorf, there had been plenty of fighting, but there had always been other things in his way, such as finding hidden locations and solving puzzles, once again making him wish that Aghanim had been able to join him, since this mysterious challenge could have been literally anything. Look at that, Singh said, pointing off in the distance. I don't remember seeing clouds like that the last time I was here. Unlike the white puffy ones that dotted the sky, the ones that she pointed to were a kind of tannish brown color, almost the same as the sand, and they were getting bigger. Not that Link was claiming to be an expert on deserts, but as the clouds got bigger and taller, it became obvious that they were not looking at ordinary clouds, but a massive sandstorm that spanned the horizon. A knot was forming in his stomach as the storm got closer, and although they needed to get off the horse, they also needed some kind of cover. In fact, any kind would help. However, before any could be found, the sandstorm seemed to pick up speed, and suddenly the wall passed over them, sprayed into his eyes, nose, and mouth. The horse snorted and stumbled sideways, while the magician hid her face behind Link's back, making it difficult for him to wipe his face with his sleeve. Just as he cleared enough of the built-up sand from his eyes in order to see, a large dark object was spotted bouncing right toward them. It was a rock. A big rounded stone that was carried by the wind, bouncing one more time before coming right for his face. Lifting his arm at the last second, the rock struck the Lord Sheriff's shield, and although he managed to deflect it, there was enough force behind the blow to send him and the magician tumbling over backwards, both crashing into the sand. The horse was heard whinnying before he lost sight of the animal, and now the storm was so powerful that it was nearly blocking out the sun, 
while more rocks were seen bouncing around towards them. 